This is my savvy story. This is my this savvy, is my story. savvy story. This is my savvy story. Presented by Seven Figure Flipping. I think some of the difference are are the uh, camaraderie and how we view each other and and immersed in di- multicultural uh, environments. Um, you get to really learn uh, different cultures on another level, a more personable level, especially because you're sitting with that individual for sometimes 12 plus hours and you know, you got to kill time, but you really get to know that person. And I think that's what makes us a family. I think, you know, for a stint in my, my life, people thought I was Filipino or Pacific Islander because I had, you know, the terminology down or they, they thought I looked like, you know, a cousin or a relative. And, you know, it was, it was funny uh, to hear them say that, but, you know, it just goes to show how, you know, the military and how you can be multicultural and, and just function as one, as a one, as a family, you know, it says, you know, a lot. Yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of similarities, but I mean, you, you're absolutely right. A lot of differences, you know, um, I will say this though, my tour in Indonesia, I would, I would say that it provided me some bridge training for life after the military, because when I was stationed in Indonesia, that was a suit and tie job because we were actually under the auspices of the state department when we were in Indonesia. So we worked at a research laboratory under the, um, the, the health community with, within Jakarta, Indonesia, uh, the Ministry of Health, and uh, it was we were in civilian clothes, so I, I really got an opportunity to experience life outside of the uniform for a year and a half, and what that would feel like working with the State Department, doing you know civic action projects um, out in town. So I was kind of prepared, um, but definitely when you get out, you know, you you have to. I don't want to say strip yourself of the things you learned in the military, but you know, you, you, you do have to learn another culture. And I think that was really probably the one thing that you want to invest some time in. Um, if you're getting out of the military is you have to learn a new culture, you know, you have to learn, uh, you know, you, you need to get accustomed to civilian culture and then whatever organization you join, what their culture is like. Military life is completely different. You are in your own world, your own bubble, your own set of roles, your own way of dressing, your own way of communicating, your own way of identifying who's who. Um, The instant level of respect that somebody commands can be told by the rank that they have on their sleeve. And that's something that you don't see in the civilian sector. And so even though as a military member, when you're on active duty, you're still interacting with civilians, you're not interacting in a way that gives you insight as to that lifestyle. So you do become institutionalized because it is an institution. The military is an institution with parameters and boundaries and structure and discipline established for you to obviously be able to uh, serve and protect. That's what we're there to do. And and so it does take a very regimented schedule. It does take a very structured environment to be able to thrive and succeed in you know, crisis situations and situations that the average individual is not going to be exposed to. And so it is, it's a completely different universe. And especially for me being a police officer and knowing again, the laws and regulations that we not only have to adhere to, but that we, um, that apply to us 365 days a year, seven days a week. You know, in the civilian sector, you go to work and you get off work and your job starts and ends there. And the military doesn't stop. There is no off time when you are active duty. You are on constantly. And so um, the realization of that um, becomes very apparent very quickly. And so your entire life has to be with that in mind, right? Your priority is to be of service. Your priority is to maintain your health, to maintain the security of others, and to make sure that you're being effective in the role that you were set out to do. Whatever the mission is, is really your primary duty. So that, having that sense of purpose, having that sense of obligation, that loyalty, that commitment, that is not something that you can very easily assimilate in the civilian sector when the biggest objective normally is financial gain. So it's just a very different level of responsibility and mindset that's required to be effective in day to day. You know, failing in the military can ultimately mean 
the costing of people's lives. And that's not the same level of responsibility that you have in typical roles outside of the military, unless of course you're in law enforcement or any kind of emergency response. That's interesting. Um, you know, contrary to popular belief, actually, I think there's a lot of similarities with military life and civilian life. But, um, you know, I would say the differences lie where uh, your day to day is, right? So our days obviously start a lot earlier. They end usually a lot later. Um, there's no worry about overtime, right? Being paid overtime. So you know that you're on call 24 seven. Like you could literally be called in at two o'clock in the morning because, hey, the schedule changed. Now we got to get underway uh, you know, six hours earlier than we were planning. And so we got to call and come back. I mean, the bonds that you create with these individuals is, is nothing that you can really describe into words. When you're willing to take a bullet for a complete stranger, um, there's no way that you can replicate that. Um, you're, you're experiencing things that you'll never be able to share with other people, that no uh, other people outside of that, even other veterans that have been deployed or that have had similar experiences are not going to have quite the same experience that you had. 